Are you ready to get serious about building content sites and building a profitable business online? Welcome to the Niche Website Builders Podcast. We bring you the latest field-tested tips, tricks, and strategies for building a profitable online asset. We interview industry experts, share customer success stories, and reveal our own experiences working on hundreds of sites to inspire and motivate you to make something happen. Let's do this. Welcome to the Niche Website Builders podcast. Today, we have Audrey Johns. Now, Audrey Audrey Johns is a recipe blogger, but not just any recipe blogger. She's been on TV shows like Rachel Ray with uh, Anthony Bourdain, Nigella Lawson. So all the big top, I guess, celebrity cooks and chefs. And she's used that to leverage her own site on losing weight by eating. And we dive into a lot of how, I guess, the recipe blogging niche works. It's at least from what I've seen and my experience, it's a lot different than your typical niche website in terms of SEO. So we dive into a lot of things about a site, how she goes about creating the recipes, how she goes about uh, structuring the site, and a lot of things she's done that's helped to build the site and to essentially monetize the site as her full-time gig. Uh, as well, if you go down to the description, you can see her sites there. She's got two of them there. She's recently launched a new one within the vegan niche. And she also provides some tips for anyone who's looking to get into the recipe niche as well. So sit back and enjoy. This episode is brought to you by Niche Website Builders, an agency dedicated to helping people just like you build profitable content sites. Niche Website Builders are the hands-off content site marketing agency you always wished existed. It's run by content site marketers for content site marketers, and they help both investors and individuals alike build profitable online properties. They provide a fully outsourced approach to content creation, link building, and done-for-you website builds, the same approach they use on their own six-figure portfolios. For example, their content packages come with a proprietary keyword research process, are written by in-house native English speakers, formatted using templates proven to convert, and uploaded to WordPress with affiliate links added so that all you need to do is hit the publish button. Check them out at nichewebsite.builders show. That's nichewebsite.builders show and fill out the form to get coupon codes for 10% more content or a 10% discount on links with your first order sent right to your inbox. All right. Welcome to the Niche Website Builders podcast. Today, we have Audrey Johns. Welcome, Audrey. Thanks so much for having me. No, thank you for coming on. You've, be, you've come well recommended from our previous guest, Doug Cunnington. Uh, he should have been published on the podcast last week as well. He's, I think he's been on two or three times. So I listened, I listened to his interview with you, which was great. And it's perfect to have you on to talk all about recipe sites because at least from what I see, a recipe is almost like its own version of SEO and its own part of the internet. It, it really is. It, it, um, there definitely is a lot more to the SEO aspect of it. And um, it's, it's quite the beast. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So let's maybe start with a little bit of your background, how you got into choosing to get into the recipe niche. You know, I actually, I fell into it um, and I'm not sure how much of this I covered on Doug's podcast, but I'm, you know, if you, if you're re-listening to all of this, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, so I, um, I was a, a new mom. I lost my job in the big housing crash back in 2009, um, 2010. And I was bored out of my mind staying at home and um, I did not know how to cook. I couldn't even boil an egg. Um, I took out some old cookbooks and I thought, I'm just going to kind of work my way through them. I'm going to teach myself how to cook. You know, it'll be an activity. Um, just, you know, having worked my whole life and then not working, I just I needed to find something to do. And, um, I started losing weight. Um, I was very overweight. I was about almost 300 pounds and, um, I, the weight just started flying off just by eating all natural food, not necessarily weight loss food, but just all natural food. And, um, I, you know, just taking my kid to her usual activities, the other moms were saying, my gosh, what are you doing? You look amazing. You're losing weight so quickly. And I had such a hard time articulating. I'm just eating all natural because clean eating movement hadn't really started yet. Um, so I said, you know, I'm just going to start a blog and I'll just put everything I eat on there every single day. And you guys can just see it. Just, just go on there. (laughs) And it's self-explanatory. 
and it spun out of control. Um, I ended up getting a um, a regular show on eHow. I don't know if anyone remembers eHow. Mm -hmm. It used to be the largest how-to website in the world. Yeah. Um, I did a ton of videos for them, um, and that drove a ton of traffic to the site. And from there, um, I ended up getting a call from a casting director, and um, they asked me to come to a casting call in Los Angeles for a TV show called The Taste. They were like, it's going to be The Voice, but for food. <laughs> and I went and um, got picked right away to be on the show. And um, from there, I, I the show was with Anthony Bourdain, Nigella Lawson, Marcus Samuelson. I got to work with all of them for weeks. Oh, the big dogs. The big dogs. <laughs> Yeah. And um, the week that I got kicked off, I was terrible. Um, I was still pretty new to cooking at that point. I was a good cook, a very good cook, but I was up against these amazing chefs. So I was just, you know, I was lucky. I think I lasted three weeks. Um, but I, the, the day I got kicked off, I got five different calls from five different literary agents saying, you need to do a book. And um, from there, it just it turned into a, a, um, a bidding war between different um, publishing houses and now four cookbooks. And, um, you know, once you go on a television show to promote your cookbook, the, the website goes crazy and um, it has just grown into this movement, um, the lose weight by eating movement, where it's just, you know, eat all natural versions of the food that you crave um, and you know, don't beat yourself up when you flip off and, you know, you have a cookie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a, it's such a unique path to, I guess, having an online business. Obviously many people start, Hey, I'm going to start ranking some stuff, get some traffic and grow from there. Whereas yours was a little different. How did you get picked up then from eHow in the beginning? You mentioned, obviously you shared the blog with friends. How did, how did that come about? Really funny, uh, at a Christmas party, I, I went to my aunt's house, my aunt and uncle's house, and my cousin always brought, you know, the stragglers who didn't have anywhere to go. Um, and um, my cousin brought uh, Rebecca, who's amazing, and she was actually one of their producers at the time. And, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, started chewing the fat, talking about life, and it, yeah, it just, it was a complete accidental meeting at a family event. It's funny, eh? Like, it's always whenever you catch up with someone or meet someone new, there's always something of value that come that comes out of it. It doesn't matter who it is, whatever. Something something comes out of every meeting. Absolutely, yeah. I meet people, and you know, two months later, we're working together on something or advising mm -hmm. each other on something, and it's just there are so many opportunities out there if you just if you're open to them. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So if you're one of those introverted niche website builders listening to this. Go out and start start meeting some people because because these things can happen. But I wanted to dive a little bit into some of the without going too much into kind of what or giving away what you're doing, but just generally within the recipe niche because it's one of those ones I guess that's joked about a lot with people filling their pages with what is like for example, um, let's just take what what was I searching the other day? I was searching chicken thigh recipes, and you know you get the whole what is this and just all sorts of filler content. But I think one of the most in interesting things was I, I looked at the first three or four recipes on the first page of Google and they were all the same recipes. Yes. And I was like, well, that's fucking annoying to me because I want, I, I want to see a lot of different recipes. I wanted to pick something because I didn't know what. So I guess from a creator's perspective, how were you finding the recipes that you're trying to do? to rank but do you need to copy and do the same recipes as everyone else or can you do original stuff well i don't want to copy and you know the great thing about losing <clears throat> thing is um i can take a, a really high fat um recipe and i can you know cut it down to something that's the same same serving size same flavor as close to the same consistency as possible and i can cut the calories by a few hundred so mm. What I do um, typically, and I usually when I go to write an article, it's I'm really kind of going off of what my followers on Facebook want. And yes, I'm definitely looking for the right keywords. I'm definitely making sure it's worth my time, right? I mean, some people will ask for really obscure things, and I'm like, <laughs> if I write another book, maybe, you know? But if I can rank for it, then I do some research. You know, I'll pull three or four different recipes, I'll print them up, 
I'll bring him to the kitchen. I'll start playing in the kitchen, making modifications, changing him up. Um, and, you know, it turns into a healthier version. But it is annoying. And I can't tell you how often I find my recipes out there. I mean, there's one person specifically who is literally stealing every single recipe from <laughs> And from every other healthy site. And what's really annoying is um, there are not, there are a lot of women when it comes to the food industry, um, surprisingly, because there's definitely more male chefs out there. But this is a, a, a young man coming into the movement and just grabbing from everyone. And um, mm. one of these days, you know, karma will come back. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah, he's, he's um, <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, but I guess the question is how do you how do you differentiate your recipe from the competition? Because, for example, as that same example, say you've got the four same recipes in the top four spots. What are you doing to differentiate yourself to potential? I mean, I guess chicken thigh recipes is probably something you might not rank for because that's like all the top right. magazine kind of sites. But maybe there's some other longer tail keywords. How are you differentiating within that niche? Because I'm assuming. If you're going doing the same recipe, it's similar, or can you, you mentioned you make modifications. Can your recipe com be completely different and still rank for those keywords? Oh yeah, absolutely. So here's a, for instance, um, somebody wanted a broccoli and cauliflower um, casserole. Casseroles are really big right now because it's cold. Mm. Um, so I, I did some research on it and I was able to see what everybody was putting out there. And it was basically like a, um, a cream dish, you know, like a, yeah. like a, <laughs> Uh, uh, potato au gratin, but made with all of those. And I'm just like, you know what, that, that just doesn't even sound appealing. And there's enough of those out there. And sure, I could make that healthy. And so I started playing with it. And I ended up coming up with a really low calorie, I think it's 74 calories for one or two cups, it's huge. But I made a, a healthy version where I used um, grainy mustard, you know, like the whole grain mustard. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, I'll, I'll introduce a completely different flavor profile. And sometimes it's to cut the calories because mustard has like practically yeah. calories, but I was able to do it with that way, you know, different cheeses. So yes, there is an issue. And when it comes to chicken thigh, um, I actually do rank pretty well for baked chicken thigh. <laughs> um, but with that, I'll actually give people four or five different seasonings. So I'll say, you know, you, you can use my taco seasoning or store-bought. You can use my ranch seasoning or store-bought. You can use this seasoning, this seasoning. So what I'll try to do is, you know, there's only so many ways you can physically bake a chicken thigh. Yeah. It has to go into the oven. You know, you're going to need a little bit of oil. You're going to need a little bit of salt. But so I'll try to give them four to five different flavor profiles within that same recipe card so they are getting other options as opposed to clicking okay, that's the same to the next clicking. Okay, that's yeah. this one will be different. <clears throat> gotcha. You mentioned your seasoning. Now, bef maybe before I go, we go into some traffic things and other things around your website, your monetization. So you've obviously expanded out quite a bit. Do you want to maybe dive into how the site's monetized or how it started to be monetized at least and now how it is monetized? Well, I was really against it <laughs> for a really long time just because I you know, was searching and seeing all of these sites with all of these ads and I just... I, you know, I was doing a hobby. So I started adding on Amazon affiliates and it blew up and it became just huge. Um, and that was back before, you know, Amazon started cutting. Yeah. How much they were <laughs> um, and so actually, it, you know, credit to my ex-husband. It was his idea. He said, hey, let's get this up on Google AdSense. And so that has been the, you know, I still have Amazon. I still have Google AdSense. Um, I'm still driving, you know, traffic to to click on ads, you know, um, cause I do need to overhead for a recipe is really high. It's in mm. 300 and a thousand dollars. So oh, you know, wow. I need the income coming in. And so, yeah, I definitely monetize. I definitely use ads and I use AdSense, Um, but I'm not really doing any other things at this time. It is there a reason you're using Google AdSense over some of the, well, I guess, premium ad networks like Mediavine, AdThrive and things? Um, there's, you know, no specific reason. And I, you know, I pr prefer to keep the income aspect a little bit on the private side. Um, I do yeah. have a, a stalker. And so I have to keep some of <laughs> yeah. kind of out of the, the realm of, 
of all of this. So yeah. I'm yeah, gonna, for sure. I, I'm going to say I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No problem. So, so you, you went with Amazon associates and, and display ads. You mentioned now you have your own taco seasoning, own ranch seasoning and things that, yeah. how did that, how did that come about? Um, actually from one of my cookbooks, um, I created a taco seasoning that went with one of the recipes. I'm not even sure which one. Um, I think it was for my instant pot cookbook and I went on the Rachel ratio. I go on there all the time. I just, oh, wow. okay. <laughs> the ranch seasoning there with Rachel and it became this internet sensation and it's really popular on her website as well. And she totally gives me credit for it. Um, so yeah, I started making my own seasonings just because I found it was a good way, not just to keep people on the site, like, Hey, if you're going to make this recipe, use the seasoning. But if you're into cooking, you likely have all of the ingredients. And so why go out and buy one of those little packets of taco seasoning when all you need is, you know, chili powder, garlic powder, you know, this, certain things that you likely already have. And mm. I put those up just to kind of keep people on the page and to give them um, all natural alternatives because there are gotcha. alternatives in those, but it kind of turned, they turned into their own entity. And now I have five different spice blends that I do recommend on different um, recipes, but I always tell people, listen, go buy it from the store. If that's what you prefer, it's cool. It'll be fine. Mm. Like to give them options. Gotcha. So, despite the way, the spice blend isn't a physical product you put together. It's a okay. spice blend that you that you've put together on the side. Like this is how you make the taco yeah. seasoning. And I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, another recipe. So it's like, hey, click here for this one. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it's also just trying to give them the content that they want, that they need, and you know nothing else. Are you also selling your cookbooks on your site? I um, I have Amazon affiliate ads that go there. Um, so okay. I'm still under contract with HarperCollins. So it still all filters through HarperCollins. But yeah, yeah. Um, you, you can buy my, my books on HarperCollins.com and on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble. Um, but I do try to filter them through my Amazon affiliate because why not make yeah. pennies on it? And then that yeah. way, something else. Somebody might go on there to, you know, buy a <laughs> book, which, yeah, I totally have right here. <laughs> But then they might be like, well, while I'm here, I might as well buy some, you know, Christmas cards or a new computer for my kid, please, please. You know, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I filter them through that way. So I guess within a, within a recipe site, because I'm assuming people come to your site have searched a specific recipe, land on that page. How are you, how are you leading people towards your cookbook to buy the cookbook? Do you have call to actions somewhere in that article or is it, I don't know, in your menu bar or something like that? It really depends on the um, on the recipe for specifically inside of the actual article. If the recipe is inspired by one of the recipes in a cookbook, or if it's a, a different take on it, I will include you know a picture of the cookbook and say, hey, you know, you can find it here as well. Um, mm. if it is up at the top bar on the website. There's a cookbooks tab. And then I always put a, I have this beautiful photo that Harper Collins put together for me with all four cookbooks. That's always at the very bottom of the page with a link oh, nice. to the cookbook page. So, you know, there's a few different ways I do it. Oh, gotcha. and the sidebar too. All of the cookbooks ah, the sidebar. Nice. Okay. Yeah. That's a good way of monetizing it all. And I guess diving into the on-page stuff, I, I do want to come back to, to kind of some of the stats of the website and what you've got going on there, but I wanted to also go into how the recipe pages uh i guess written and created you mentioned there's a huge overhead to doing to doing a recipe but then we mentioned at the very beginning as well a lot of the a lot of the content on the pages is, is almost filler content and not just the recipe obviously we know google recently is kind of going more towards shorter answers or wanting to get the answers straight away but they're still obviously ranking recipes where the recipes down the very bottom after a whole list of whatever it is so do you want me to dive into your thoughts about that and then kind of how you go about it and why why you kind of need a lot of that filler stuff? Well, I mean, you want some of the filler stuff because you want ads, right? I mean, you got to mm. money back. Um, but I, you know, there's been this real debate within this realm of, you know, are we adding too much content? And nobody wants to know about, you know, how you made these cookies for your kids' bake sale. Mm. And, you know, <laughs> wants to know that that's ridiculous um so i actually i've, I've gone against 
um, all of the advice I've gotten from SEO experts and we're going to see if it pays off or not, but I'm not doing that. I mean, I, I'm interesting articles down to about 600 words. If it, they get to a thousand because I'm giving people what they really want. Great. But I feel like long term, it's smarter to have a shorter article that's just giving them what they want. So, um, when I go to start, a um, a, a recipe, and hopefully this will help others out there. I start at the bottom. I fill out the recipe card because that's the meat and mm. potatoes, sometimes literally of the article. <laughs> um, and then um, if while I'm working on that, if there's a way to meal prep it, if there's a way to save money, if there's a way to buy a rotisserie chicken at the store as opposed to having to cook the chicken and then shred it, th that's what I add up above. So, you know, I'll give a little bit of introduction. You know, this recipe is healthy because of dot, dot, dot. Then I'll give them the jump links because that's what they yeah. want. Then I'll talk about ingredients and give them substitutions mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, if you want vegan, go this way. If you want gluten free, go this way. Then I go to, down to the how to area and that's where I'll add in meal prepping or meal planning for it. And then finally the recipe card. So I'm not adding all the filler that everybody else does. And Interesting. There's a really good chance I'm going to regret it. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I feel like Google's going to this realm of just give them what they want. And so I'm like, aye, aye sir, I'm just going to give them what they want. Mm. So we'll see if it pans out. I also think you have the advantage. Too. You've obviously got a big personal brand behind us. So do you get a lot of traffic from people searching your name or your cookbook and things? I do. I really do. In yeah. fact, in any time, um, any of the shows I've been on re-air anything or share it on social media, um, I do get a really big influx of... Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, just looking for me or just looking for Audrey's recipes or... Yeah, so that does that. Help. Yeah, that, that is awesome to, to begin that free traffic just from TV and from whatever else being re-aired. That's, that, that's the dream, isn't it? That's like, that's, that's the passive income dream that you've done that. They've done that show once and the, essentially the royalty is, is the attention back to your own properties. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, come January 1st, I'm hoping Rachel Ray will re-air it, you know, <laughs> re-share and all of that stuff. But yeah. Um, it's, it's fun that they, and they, they kind of give you a little bit of clout too, you know, when you're like, yeah, I got to cook with Kathy Lee Gifford before she left the Today Show. Here's a video. I mean, am I bragging? Yes, but I'm okay with bragging. I should be. Mm. I worked hard to get there, and it does give you the clout that um, that makes you a little bit more sticky in the space. Yeah, does that? Are you putting that kind of social proof clout on the website, maybe on the homepage or something like that, to show, hey, I'm I'm legit in the oh. space? Oh yeah. yeah. Look at my. So here's a funny story. I um. I, I actually cut out my about page in a really big way and really cut it down and cut it down. And it started affecting the way the website was, you know, it was just started affecting mm. ranking. So I went back on and I had a day where I had to just say, it's okay to brag because, you know, for, for women, it's um, when we brag, people say, you know, negative stuff about us. And so it's very hard to, you know, brag about our accomplishments. So I bragged <laughs> a lot. You know, I put the pictures of myself and Anthony Bourdain and Nigella Lawson up. I put the video of me and Kathy Lee and, you know, the video of when I was on The Doctors or, you know, um, Rachel Ray. So, yeah, I put all of that back on there. And so it's I have a really braggy, braggy <laughs> about me page. But, you know what? Um I did all that work. I worked hard to get there. Yep. I, I, I need to start accepting it and I hope others will as well. Yeah. Well, that's, that's instant trust factor for anyone who goes on your website, you know, like you're not just some random blogger sharing recipe. You've, you've done this and you've done that. And they go, okay, this person can cook. Yeah. So I, I can go follow whatever it is they're doing. And I, I guess that's part, part of the whole eat thing as well. Um, and I guess with the new, with their new thing they've added with the extra E as part of the E called experience. Yes. So now it's, I mean, now you're essentially satisfying that factor by doing that as well. Yes. Can somebody please tell Google? <laughs> 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 Google. <Yeah. laughs> so I wanted to touch on your, on your traffic as well. I guess, I guess getting on, beginning with eHow and stuff, you probably got an influx of traffic from that, but how was your traffic growing over time? And I guess number of posts on the website, how many posts do you have or do, do you have throughout those traffic growths? Um, so my traffic took a really big mm. digger. Um, so I mentioned I have a, I had a stalker. He actually tore down the website a bit. Like oh damn, listed my top ten pages. 
Wow. Um, yeah, that was nice. Um, so I had to go back in and completely rebuild the site. And um, while I did that, you know, the whole recipe card thing became really popular and um, um, really helpful because it gives you another option, another spot where you're seen on a, in, you know, on the search engine. So I went through, I redid the entire site added recipe cards across the board, tore down a ton of old posts, reworked some old stuff and um, went on a 365 post binging year. <laughs> and I'm currently over 750 articles. Um, you know, some of them have 20 recipes on them. Some of them have one. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I have a lot um, of posts and I, um, I'm sorry, I lost track of your question. No. <laughs> <That's so good. laughs> Content. <laughs> no, that, that, that's all good. That 750 posts. But I guess the question is as well as is, is site structure, because I can imagine being a recipe site focused on natural foods for weight loss, that leaves you open to like every food category imaginable. It's not just like, it's not just chicken recipes. So how do you structure the site where I guess it's user friendly, but also isn't an SEO mess with just articles anywhere, no kind of in, uh, in, internal linking and things like that? Well, I had a professional recipe page built, so it's up at the very top and you can click on it and then it will give you um, photos that say, you know, vegan, vegetarian, you know. Mm, so those are your categories. So I categorize them gotcha. and I have this really big, pretty page um, that I had made for me that kind of directs people there. Um, so that's, you know, it's, um, it's a big site. Like, you know, as, as you're alluding to, there's, there's a lot going on. Um, but you know, it's, it's 99% recipes. And so that's kind of helpful where you can just kind of, you know, filter people. Mm. And then are you, internally linking between for example just the vegan recipes or you i guess the how are you internally linking between because if you mention maybe a specific food within the recipe are you trying to link out to another recipe that uses that food because i'm assuming you might have multiple recipes maybe using broccoli and if no, you mention broccoli yeah no that that becomes a bit on the messy side i found yeah was and this is probably i'm, I'm sure some people are going to be like no there's better ways to do it but <laughs> I take screenshots. Um, so if you go on my website, you'll see that the cards come up really pretty. Um, and so I'd screenshot the card. And, um, and so at the very bottom of the post, I'll say, you know, um, more to read. And then I'll have three of those screenshots and then the links behind them. And it just kind of filters them over to them. Mm, okay. Um, I've also had some, um, custom blocks made. And within those blocks, it, it'll be right up above the recipe card, you know, more recipes like this. And then I'll, you know, so say for instance, right now I'm doing a lot of leftovers for holidays. So, you know, more holiday leftover recipes, and then I'll just have them all there and it's really pretty and it just shoots them right on over. So not so much everywhere within the post, but in little blocks specifically, I'll do. Gotcha. And, and you mentioned the overheads for each recipe is quite high. What, what does that go to so what are the costs of creating a recipe and publishing it on the site well there's food and you know it's yeah. really <laughs> expensive and i would love for every single recipe i start on to just be right out of the ballpark done it's 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 a winner but they're not um once in a while i get lucky and i'll hit one out of the ballpark right away but often i have to make a recipe two to three times to get it perfect Mm. Um, now I have pared it down, you know, for recipe call, you know, has 10, 10 servings on the, the website. I may have just made just one serving. So it doesn't cost me. Okay. So much. But that's a huge overhead, especially, <clears throat> you know, food costs have been lately. Um, second is photography. I am a horrible photographer. I, I don't want to dive <laughs> too much into what I do for photography, but I will say I pay for it. <laughs> um, and, um, and then, you know, sometimes with the photography, there's food styling, um, and then, you know, there's also a decent amount of overhead when it comes to just needing help on the coding side on, um, you know, I'm just a cookbook author. So when it comes to, you know, coding and creating templates and different things, often I'll farm that out because it's just worth my time to, to pay for. Yeah. So. Food, food styling is an interesting area because it's, it's an, almost like a separate expertise itself. Obviously you see all the 
fast food ads on TV and everyone knows that what you see there is not what you get <laughs> from wherever it is. So do you want to maybe dive into that process of food selling? Obviously you outsource it, but how, how that works for, for various recipes. Oh yeah. Um, it's actually really interesting that you brought that up because my food stylist, uh, Cindy Epstein is her name. She's amazing. Um, she's done all four of my cookbooks. She actually does a lot of the, um, the commercials that you see and she does all okay. the stores. And so, um, yeah, the, I have watched her work, especially with the cookbooks when it comes to recipes, you know, it's, it's, you know, for the site that's different, but when, you're on set for a cookbook, you get to see everything. There is um, a lot of not fully cooking food because a fully cooked chicken is hideous. Five five minutes after you get out of the oven, you, you can't photograph that thing. It's just <laughs> shriveled up and disgusting looking. We've all seen a rotisserie chicken from the store. They do not look good. They taste good. They look good. Um, and there's lots of glycerin added to things, little you know droplets of water. Um, there's a lot of, you know, use of tweezers to perfectly put that little piece of chopped cilantro in the right spot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> interesting, fun um, industry. And a uh, funny story, we actually, for my very first cookbook, uh, it's called Lose Weight by Eating, we wanted to do a, um, like, a little picnic scene because there were so many mm foods with my daughter and she was just a little shrimp at the time she's a teenager now but she was just a little one and um we put her on this you know blanket out in cindy's backyard actually food stylist's backyard with all the different food and we took a few photographs and then we had it and so we're like okay we, we got that shot let's move on to the next and my daughter sophia goes to grab for a piece of chicken <laughs> Health and the food stylist and the photographer were like throwing ourselves at this little girl. No, don't eat that. It's not fully cooked. Because <laughs> just, you know, often the food that you're seeing in a photograph is sometimes it's literally even food. <laughs> so, um, and there's a lot of, you know, like um, crumpled up paper at the bottom of a casserole dish and then the food on top of it. And mm. it, there's a lot of tricks. So I, I actually saw. I saw a video, it must have been a while ago, of how they did it with pizza. And they like put glue with the cheese oh, to yeah. make it stretch. Oh, glue is totally a thing. And she would pull out her steamer, like one of those fancy steamers you would see at like a modeling photo shoot <laughs> yeah. clothing. And she's like steaming food to get it to stretch. Oh, yeah. There's oh my gosh. steamers and all kinds of weird <laughs> stuff happening. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to dive into some of the keyword research too because I can imagine there's unlimited keywords because even I've even I've sat and I've opened the fridge and I'd be like I have this ingredient this ingredient this ingredient so I'm going to search for a recipe with chicken and onion and jalapenos or something and I'm like there's no way in how someone has a recipe for those keywords sometimes I do sometimes I don't but I can imagine there's like a billion search terms like that of people just searching what they have in the house. So what's your process then around that? Are you attacking things like that? Or are you kind of sticking more into the kind of basic one or two ingredient things? Um, that's an interesting <laughs> question. I mean, like I said, uh, very often I'll put a call out on Facebook and I'll say, Hey, you know, I need some suggestions, you mm. know, holiday recipes. What do you guys want? And they'll come back with this laundry list of amazing ideas and then I actually, and I know not everybody uses it, but I really do love the Uber Suggest tool for um, uh, for keyword research. I've gotten so mm. to it. Um, so it's a lifetime I, deal, right? Um, I pay monthly no. for it. Okay. Yeah. I, I pay monthly for it. But um, I'll go on there and I'll see, you know, is there, you know, how would a bell pepper and tomato soup do kind of a thing? And then I'll just kind of play around with it and figure it out. But I really do kind of go to the, the the mill, so to speak, very often. And I go to Facebook and I ask people. With that said, I have a quarter of a million people on Facebook. So okay. <laughs> very large sampling of the people who typically will be looking for stuff. I know there's way smarter ways of doing it, but I don't want to steal traffic. I don't want to undercut other people. Um, and I want something to do well on Facebook if it won't hit SEO. So that's mm. my route. Like, if you want it on Facebook and if it has a good search term and I can hit it, there's two possibilities there for me. It's worth my time to do it. Mm, that's such a good tactic too, because I kind of, you're not relying then on just getting trapped from Google when you've got that crowdsourcing there as well. I mean, 
if you got that many people ready to hit your blog from that, that's a good a good SEO sign too from all the clicks going on there. Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. So, so what are you then looking for from Uber Suggest when you see a keyword? Are, are there things or, I guess, KPIs that you're kind of looking at to be like, okay, I can go after this versus no, I don't want to do that recipe. Well, I always look at um, the keyword difficulty. That's, you know, a, a big one. Like you said, you know, chicken thighs. I'm not going to beat Epicurious. You know, I'm not going to beat Food Network on that stuff. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'll, um, I often look at keyword difficulty. And if it's close to, you know, what I think I can rank for, then I dive in a little bit deeper. Um, but I'm also always kind of looking at they've got a, a, a numerical, like a, you know, how much will your advertisers pay within this realm? I always want to make sure they're valuable. Sometimes I don't. Um, if I feel like I really want to make this recipe and I, I don't care if it's valuable or not. I mean, often that does yeah. happen. There's at least one recipe a week where I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to do what I want to. Sorry, I cursed. Um, no, go for it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, but a lot of it is just you know, gut and is it worth my time? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, I guess the other thing is, what does your day to day look like then? Because you mentioned you sometimes you got to cook the same recipe three times. You're probably going through a lot of diff or have a list of recipes you need to do. So you're cooking multiple times a day and then trying things. No, also? no, no, no. I am a I am a very siloed working working person work or worker. Um, <laughs> I can't do that. Um, that would just drive me nuts. I I typically write. <laughs> Um, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and then I test, um, starting on Fridays all the way through Monday. So this way it's, you know, food my kids mm. have, or, you know, if my, my guy is over, you know, I'll make a date night meal. Um, but yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I don't want the food just to be, you know, throw away. It's too, yeah. Easy. And so I'll, I'll cook for a few days. I'll package up a ton of stuff. So I have meal prep stuff ready for my kid because once I start typing, um, it's almost like on a big holiday where you're, if you're the cook, you're seeing all this food and you're working with all this food and you're touching all this food. And then by the time you sit down, you're like, I'm not even hungry. And it's almost like you've told your brain, I've eaten all of this, even though you've just touched and looked at it. It's the same way with writing about food. It's like, mm. I'm not hungry. And so I package up the food so that it's ready for my kid. I don't want to cook after typing all day long. So yeah, that's, that's how I work it. But there's no harm in, you know, anybody out there looking to start a recipe site, there's no right or wrong way to do it. So bring your computer into the kitchen with you. Um, whatever you have to do. Greatest tip I ever got ever, ever was from my Jella Lawson. Keep a kitchen journal. The best tip ever. I just I always have a notepad or, you know, a, a, a ringed binder in my note in my kitchen and I'm just always jotting down notes and always going back and you know crossing something out and you know so that's probably the best tip I can give anyone out there trying to get into my same space as me. Interesting so a kitchen journal as in not writing down the recipe but writing notes of hey I added too much of this or not enough of this? Both actually so I'll actually okay. I'll you know, go in and I'll write down what the recipe is and um a basic, you know, this is how I want to do it. After creating so many recipes, I can say I'm going to need one chicken breast. I'm going to need, you know, half a teaspoon of salt. I know what I'm going to need. So I'll write it all mm. out and then I'll go into the kitchen. And I'll start working on it. And then I'll be like, oof, that was not enough salt or that was too much or I needed to add this or it really needed some jalapenos and some onions. You know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I kind of work that way. And then eventually I... Um, I get, I get to Narnia as I call it. And I, I finally figure out the golden ticket and then I, you know, go on to the next. And that way I can just kind of lock myself in the office to type and type and type for days. <laughs> Have you thought about expanding to YouTube as well? Obviously you've got the TV presence and that kind of background as well. It seemed, it would seem almost like a logical step to kind of turn those recipes into, into video. I want to do that. Um, and I enjoy being on camera um, and I do have a YouTube channel and it's not currently monetized. Um, but what I can say is I have a, I have a stalker. And so with that, mm -hmm. I can't cook in my own home. I can't give away too much of what's going on in my personal life. I mean, I actually had a producer who was like, let's get you your own show, but we're going to have to do it reality style. And I'm like, 
sorry, can't do mm. it. That's where Food Network is right now. It's all reality based in a good way, you know, like Pioneer, yeah. you know, you're seeing her daily life. So I don't really have that option. I am launching a new recipe site um, and I'm going to take a different approach on videos. So that'll be happening in January. I'm currently working on those. Interesting. So, so, you've, so you've got your one recipe site now and you're going to launch a different one. So yeah. is that going to be in a different, uh, I guess, a different theme? Yes. To, yes. Okay. It will be. When, when is this podcast going to come out? This will be 2023. So this will be after it's been released. So after it comes out. Okay. Yeah. Well, if, if, if I can swear you to secrecy, yep. <laughs> um, it's actually, it's going to be a vegan site. So I have a ton okay. of pictures. It's going to be called Love of Veggies. It's already up, um, but I want it to be really packed full of stuff. I want it to essentially have the same amount as a cookbook um, before mm. I And what I have found with food becoming so expensive that eating vegan even if just one meal a day, like you don't have to go vegan. It isn't about anything outside of, I feel better when I eat vegan and I save a ton of money. So <laughs> that's where I'm going with Love of Veggies. And it's going to be a cost-effective way of eating healthy. Um, and mm. I will give, like, for instance, yesterday I typed up a recipe where I said, hey, you know, if you're not a vegan, you can, you know, put a fried egg on top of this. It would be fantastic. Gotcha. So I'll give people the other options. But at the same time, I'm, as of now, I don't want to put any photos of um, eggs or meat on the site just because I have so many plant-based <laughs> readers that are just so grossed out by it. I want to give them yeah. a space where they won't like ooh, get sick. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where it will merge. So um, don't hold me to that. But yeah, I think, it, I think it's going to be a really exciting site. And the videos I'm making are more, um, they're based around the whole reels movement. And, um, okay. so I'm going to the grocery store and I'm probably getting all kinds of weird looks, but I'm videoing the ingredients and the prices. And then I'm putting it all together and I'm saying, look, here's this really healthy, really filling, really delicious lunch that you can make for $6 and 35 cents. You know, now mm. that it would be, you know, ten dollars so here's a way for you to save four dollars a day which will save you x amount of dollars per month so that's the way i'm going with that we'll see what happens when it rolls out but um both plant-based foods and um and cost effective have been the biggest requests at lose weight by eating and so i'm trying to just kind of create that space for my readers so i i love that strategy like it's you're not just relying on that Google traffic. You're doing the whole social real thing. And <clears throat> as someone who watches, so I watch, my wife thinks I'm crazy. But I watch grocery shopping video, like that, the huge within, I guess, the fitness bodybuilding space, guys going to the grocery store and showing what they buy at the grocery store there, how they prep their meals and stuff like that. And there's like series, like big on a budget, which is like basically bulking, building muscle with $50 a week and things like that. And those videos go insane. So I can imagine if you're doing that in short form on reels and things, you'll absolutely kill it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I'm looking at it from like a marketing standpoint. Hopefully yeah. I sell my other lose weight by eating folks on just, just one meal, just to save money. Just, just try. Don't hate me because everyone's <laughs> so protein, 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 protein right now because the keto movement. And it's like, mm. can of chickpeas, babe. It's a dollar <laughs> a hell of a lot cheaper than a steak and you're going to get a ton of protein, you know? So I'm trying to sell people on this way of eating, um, in a palatable way. And, and it all comes down to cost. So, yeah. so thank you for mentioning that. Cause I'm going to have to look that up. I was under yeah. of these whole it's, $50. It, up. Yeah. Yeah. Within the whole bodybuilding space, there's like, there's whole channels I like, dedicated literally to, uh, following, various bodybuilders and take them to the supermarket and then having them cook the food. It's, it's crazy. Like I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of views, millions of subscribers kind of stuff. Yeah. That's big. Wow. Well, cause if you think about it, think about it within bodybuilding, like it's all about what they're eating each day kind of thing. Oh. So oh, it's, yeah, it's big. It's totally the same space I'm in, but you know, this one we're trying to lower where they're trying it's yeah. the same space. It really exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. So there's, there's heaps of stuff there, but I guess what advice, would you give someone, someone's listening to this now, they go, oh, you're starting a recipe site, 2023. It's now 2023 as the people listening to this. What advice would you give to someone who's maybe thinking, hey, I want to jump into that space too 
and potentially start my own recipe site? Well, I would say stay true to you. Um, please don't steal photos and <laughs> steal recipes. Um, it will come back to bite you, I have no doubt. Um, but I, what I said on Doug's show and what I'll say on your show, there can never be too many recipes. You know, I am probably mm. the only recipe site people who will say, please, we would love to have you in our community. Um, you know, I would recommend trying to either find your, one of two things, either try to find your own niche, which would be for me, weight loss recipes and now coming up low cost vegan or go big, like just do it all. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's only, you know, either you throw a really big net or you throw a small net, but, um, I, I would say, you know, have fun with it. Um, lean on social media. It's, it's a really great place to get recipes out and, um, yeah, um, reach out, reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Find me. You, there's on both sites, love of veggies and lose weight by eating. You can fill out a contact page. I would love to mentor somebody looking to move into this space. Perfect. There you go. Anyone looking to start their site in 2023. <laughs> Make sure you reach out. But before we before we finish this off too, I wanted to touch on some other off page stuff, link building, things like that. I know you mentioned uh, in another podcast you haven't done any. Is that is that going to change with your new site? Are you looking to actively build links to your new one as well? Uh, um, well, I have <clears> linked <throat> back maybe once or twice, but I don't I don't want to set off any bells and whistles with um, mm. people. Uh, for link building in general, it's kind of like. Um, with photos, I, I don't have time for it. I'm not good at mm. it. it. There may come a time where I hire someone to work on that for me, but I can't tell you how many emails I get on a daily basis from people I wouldn't even know where to start for somebody who's done <laughs> But I just, I don't have time for it. Um, mm. And I, I would rather put out really great content and be behind the curve um, mm. than sacrifice the content <laughs> and link build. So, you know, I, I, I know I'm you know, missing a huge opportunity with this. But. Well, I can imagine you get quite a few links from being on various people's shows and stuff on their oh, websites, right? Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. So you're, you're probably in a pretty good space considering you've been on some, some, all, all the big dog stuff and you've been mentioning a lot of their recipes and things like that. So I, I guess that comes down to meeting again, like at the beginning of the podcast, meeting these people and, and having those, I guess, relationships and, uh, what we call it partnerships. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I definitely have links from the today show from Rachel Ray from. Me. Okay. Yes. So I definitely have some, some links in there, but they came uh, very organically. I didn't mm. out for them. Yeah. Nice. No, this, this has been great, Audrey. I mean, yeah, we've covered a whole lot of stuff. You answered a whole lot of my questions about recipe because I'm sitting there trying to find stuff. And again, finding all the same things all the damn time. So I have to check your site out to see <laughs> if I can find something, find something different, but I mean, you mentioned people can can find you by contacting you on your websites, but is there any other way people can follow you, find you, socials, anything like that? Yeah, so I am really, really um, active on Facebook. I try to answer every single question and every single comment. So you can find me at Lose Weight by Eating with Audrey Johns on Facebook. I haven't created the one for Love of Edgies yet, so just go there and <laughs> some link to send you over to the other one if you prefer. <laughs> Perfect. Now, well, thanks for coming on and sharing everything to do with your sites, Audrey. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, James. It was a lot of fun to chat with you. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you're listening. Until the next episode, goodbye.